Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute. This is case 39 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. And this is a case of a perfect storm, multiple complications occurring in the same patient. The patient presented with a mid-LAD CTO. This was a heavily calcified vessel with significant tortuosity as well. However, crossing was fairly easy. It was achieved with undergrade wire escalation using a filter XT guide wire that was advanced to the distal LAD as confirmed with contralateral injection. However, we did have significant difficulty advancing the Corsair microcatheter through the occlusion. Once again, that was likely due to the, perf to the calcification as well as the tortuosity. However, we were able to advance it and then we switched the guide wire for a atherectomy guide wire and we did orbital atherectomy of the entire LAD. And this you can see has, may have caused a little dissection in the proximal and the mid vessel. Despite doing a therectomy, when predilatation was performed, there remained a significant waste in the balloon in the middle AD. That is why the atherectomy wire, the Viper, was reinserted and the patient underwent repeat orbital atherectomy. And after doing that, the mid LAD lesion was nicely expanded. However, during the predilatation attempts, the balloon rupture. And when we took a picture, this is what was found, a significant large vessel perforation at the site of the balloon rupture. And the lesson here is that balloon rupture can cause perforation, and that is why when a balloon breaks, the first thing is get the balloon out so there is no more air coming in, and the immediate next step is to image the vessel to make sure that no perforation has occurred. So an angiogram should be done immediately because if you know about the problem, you can take care of the problem immediately. Otherwise, bleeding can go into the pericardium for a long period of time until we realize that the perforation has occurred. Once the perforation is found, the very first step for any kind of perforation is to inflate a balloon so that the vessel is occluded and the risk of uh, tamponade goes down. And that's exactly what was done in this case. A balloon was advanced over the guide wire, inflated proximal to the perforation, and there's no ongoing extravasation in the pericardium. Standard approach, every perforation, balloon is inflated so that the pericardial bleeding is stopped. The next step depends on the cause. If extravasation continues despite the prolonged inflation, then for large vessel perforations, the therapy is a covered stent. For distal vessel perforation, suction embolization or cover stand as well. And the way the cover stand is uh, deployed depends on the guide we have. Currently, with the lower profile jaw stands, they can be delivered through a single 8 French guide catheter. However, um, quite often a second guide catheter is used to be able to deliver the cover stand. Here's an example of this dual guide catheter technique. The perforation happened, a balloon is inflated through the first guide catheter to seal the perforation. Then a second guide catheter is advanced into the vessel ostium and a second guide wire is inserted past the area of perforation. Then the cover stand is delivered, the first balloon is removed, the cover stand is deployed, and that leads to sealing of the perforation. That's exactly what was done in our case. A second guide catheter was advanced after pushing back the initial guide catheter. And during transient deflation of the balloon, a second guide wire was advanced to the mid to distal LAD. However, those jaw stands can be fairly bulky and difficult to deliver. And that was exactly the case in our patient. Despite having the balloon there that can add, act as a distal anchor, we could not deliver the cover stand to the site of perforation. So cover stands, the jaw stands, can be very challenging. In Europe and other countries, there are different stands like the papyrus, which are much more deliverable. However, in the US, the only stand approved under the humanitarian device exemption is the jaw stand. We therefore used a guideliner that was an 8 French guideliner delivered to the mid LAD. And then we were able to deliver the cover stand through the guideliner all the way into the area of perforation. So a cover stand can fit through a guideliner 
and uh, this may be best done by preloading the cover stand into the guide liner so there are no issues when the guide liner um, collar interacts with the stand trying to get into the guide liner cone. In this particular case, after the co cover stand was implanted, there was nice hemostasis achieved. This little dissection, there's some proximal irregularities, but the good news are the perforation is sealed. At the time, we did an echocardiogram that demonstrated only a small pericardial effusion, which is very encouraging. The patient did not have hypotension, therefore, we did not need to do pericardiocentesis. We then went ahead, stenting the remaining of the LAD, placing a stent distally. We also placed the stent proximally all the way to the ostium of the LAD. And unfortunately, by placing the ostium, we did develop a dissection of the proximal LAD extending into the left main, which is um, an unfortunate second complication here, but the good news is that we have a wire into the circumflex, so we protect both vessels, LAD and circumflex, in case that this dissection expands and causes left main compromise. The proximal stand was deployed, and we now have good flow in the LAD, but we still have that staining. However, soon thereafter, the ACT was a little lower. We didn't give any heparin, but we did not reverse the heparin effect either. But then we observed that there was a filling defect forming inside the stand, and that was thrombus within the recently placed stand. So it's one of those unfortunate events that one complication can bring another and in this case we have perforation that now is resolved but now we have thrombosis in the same patient. The thrombus was aspirated with an export um, aspiration catheter and that improved the stenosis but we still have the dissection in the left main that is back now. Therefore we decided for safety to place another drug eluting stand all the way to the ostium of the LAD and by doing that we were able to restore excellent flow in both the LAD as well as the circumflex. There is no longer a dissection affecting the left main. The patient did very well. He did not have any hypotension and repeat echocardiogram that was done at the end of the case. So only a very, very small pericardial effusion. As a result, we did not perform pericardiocentesis. And this demonstrates the importance of inflating a balloon immediately after a perforation occurs, because by doing that and doing the dual guide cutter technique in this case, or in some patients, we can have both a blocking balloon and a cover stand delivered to the same, micro the same guide catheter. The good news are we may minimize the bleeding into the pericardium and avoid the need for doing pericardiosynthesis. And that was exactly what happened in this case. So early balloon inflation is key. The patient did have an uneventful recovery. So in summary, this case shows many things, including that the balloon rupture can be a bad complication causing perforation. And that is why after balloon ruptures, it is important to immediately do an angiogram to determine whether balloon rupture here caused perforation or not. The second is that once a perforation occurs, regardless of type, the first step is to inflate a balloon to prevent bleeding into the pericardium. The other message here is for delivering a cover stand. In this particular case, this was done with a second guide catheter using the so-called ping pong or dual guide catheter technique. The one guide catheter has a wire through the perforation and a balloon blocking bleeding into the pericardium. The second guide catheter is through which the cover stand is delivered into the area of perforation, which can be challenging and may require use of a guide catheter extension, as in this case. And finally, this case demonstrates why we usually do not reverse intercoagulation in case of a vessel perforation. The reason being that if gear is still present within the coronary tree, reversing the effect of heparin may result in vessel thrombosis, essentially trading a bad complication, which is perforation, for another which can be even worse, that is vessel thrombosis. Thank you.